Hi everyone, welcome. What you see out here on my bench is a bus bin that's got some worms living in it. And this system is my newest system. As of now, it's a month old. It's been in service for 31 days. And it was originally put into service without any food and we let the worms live in here for 10 days before they got their first meal. So on day 10, it got feeding number one and then 11 days later on day 21, it got feeding number two. That was the last feeding and now 10 days later, day 31, we're gonna be giving the system its third feeding. And uh, let's see, feeding number one included avocado, which we saw as leftovers last time we checked in because the avocado was put in frozen and I did put a cut around the uh, perimeter of it, but I didn't separate it. And it seemed like there had been no real worm infiltration. So during the last check-in, we actually did separate the, um, we separated the two halves of the avocado so that, you know, worms can have e easy access to it. And then, um, and then the feeding that they got last time seemed to me like it would be a pretty quick composting meal. There was stuff like strawberry tops, there was some fennel, um, I think there was one other something mixed in there, but it was all stuff that seemed like it would probably get eaten pretty quickly. So I figured we'd come back in here today and I've got a variety of things for them. One thing we definitely noticed in this system from day one was that it was um, really, really damp, built with a lot of perhaps excess moisture it's pretty interesting where I guess that I guess it was um, not visible because I pulled it off with the top covering newspaper but there was a, a coffee filter resting here in the middle to indicate where where that last feeding we gave them was positioned and that was down the middle along with some dry leaves I guess part of the thinking there was that these dry leaves would partially absorb some of the moisture in the system although they don't seem very damp <laughs> Hard to say and then we threw in some pieces of cardboard so um, I'm kind of going at this all over the place sometimes I'll kind of spin around the outer edges a little bit like I think we did last time before proceeding to the middle of the bin to feed maybe we'll do just that and you know I keep forgetting but something I've been wanting to incorporate right at the beginning of my feedings is the uh, application of this mosquito dunks solution which works really good against not only mosquitoes if you've ever used this stuff if you have a pond or some other standing water in your property you know you know that the stuff works great but I've also found that it works pretty well on controlling the the gnats and fruit flies that sometimes make themselves at home in my systems and I guess this would be an opportunity to maybe keep an eye out to see if any of them are showing up and I don't think I saw any so I did institute the use of this stuff a few weeks ago. All my systems got some. And then during each check-in, I've been including it as a routine item. And I just sort of forget every time when I start digging into a system. So I'm not adding this because of the moisture content. This system's got plenty of moisture content, as you can see. It's more for, it's more for the, the chemical compound that it, that's in here. The, the so-called BTI, which is just an abbreviation for some sort of bacteria name. So that's probably enough. I see a little something was attempting to grow down here. So let's um, let's just continue around the outer edges. I guess the edges were kind of fun to examine in this bin because it would um, give us a peek right down at the very bottom of the bin where a lot of the moisture in the system had been collecting. And then we would, you know, almost every time come up with a good handful of nice chubby worms, well hydrated worms. I recently harvested a system where the material was left to dry so that the worms would be um, not so much the it wasn't the drying was more for trying to attain nice crumbly loose casting so that I can screen this stuff. And it seems like um, perhaps a not so good side effect of that was that the worms all seemed like so so skinny, so dehydrated that I felt bad for them. So coming into a system like this where they've got ample moisture, perhaps even maybe more than they need, the worms all seem very nicely hydrated and nice and chubby. And I think they like that. And I like that too. 
Oh yeah, look at that. Nice big pile of worms. I was trying to avoid the actual feeding area down the middle. Oh, bread. Now okay, it occurred to me that bread was the other third ingredient. I guess this mold that we're seeing here is probably signs of the, um, the bread. So let's dig right in. Let's go see how that last feeding from a uh, 10 days ago was coming along. I guess 10 days between the launch of the worms into their new system isn't really an interval between feedings unless you treat them being exposed to all the new bedding as a feeding, which it is in a way because they can eat their bedding. But the application of food now, you know, 11 days between feedings one and two and now 10 days between feedings two and three, this being the third feeding, the, uh, the interval might be a little more frequent than is necessary, but I like the idea of coming into my new bins perhaps a little bit more um, early than would be absolutely necessary just to make sure things are coming along okay and that the worms are doing well. And it does seem like things are doing pretty good in here. So besides all that leaf, leafy material, we threw in these two chunks of cardboard onto which the bread went and onto which the um, that, that green fennel, the leafy, it's not even so leafy, it looks almost more stringy or almost bushy. Um, and the strawberry, I didn't think we'd see many leftovers of the veggies or the fruits. Although, oh, here we go, finally. The avocado, I did expect to see some leftovers of. If nothing else, then the, the shell, which is tough, very tough. And the seed, which is probably still pretty much intact. I'm actually kind of surprised it took us this long to stumble on the avocado. But where is the other half? Uh, there's some other items in here, some stuff like this uh, stem of a pumpkin that came over with the worms from their previous home which means there's also a, uh, a cork floating around in here somewhere. I normally don't go out of my way to try seeking those sort of things out. They'll just surface once in a while and then we'll be reminded that, oh, this is the system with the cork. Is This, this seems to me almost like the material that would have been inside the other half of an avocado. And all these worms might be... <laughs> telltale as to where the other half of the avocado is. I'm, I'm kind of looking for the pit, you know. The avocado pit is what I'm thinking we're going to just bump into because it's a pretty obvious larger sized object. Well, here's the cork. I guess I was just trying to see if I could feel around and locate some sort of a spherical object around this size. And I did find the, uh, the cork. So it'll surface. I think we'll just continue to excavate here a little bit and explore but I think we should um we should think about getting this next feeding in here so we can let these little guys get back to work where is the other <laughs> I don't know why I get I get caught up you know because how hard can it be to find the pit of an avocado because it's a pretty good size object not to mention the the shell of the avocado too it's got to be around here somewhere this has got to be a corn cob, just based on the fact that it's hollow and it has that weird kind of shape to it. I don't want to crush it because it's so interesting to see how it looks. All right, how much more time do we devote to looking for the avocado pit? <laughs> Could we have simply excavated it along with some other materials that came out earlier and we just missed it? You know, the heck with it, who cares? <laughs> Seems very unlikely that the worms would have actually eaten an avocado pit. Oh, guess what? It's always when I kind of commit to um, giving up on the search is when I find something. Kind of weird that this half of an avocado doesn't have the mob scene going on inside of it the way the other one did. And the, the pit's going to hold out for a little while longer, that's for sure. All right, so I'm going to begin making a pretty good size hole here because I made... The commitment to myself quite some time ago that I'm going to try to go big on my systems instead of starting with just a shallow system and working up the depth of it over a great period of time I'd rather just try to start with systems much um, greater in size which I believe in itself is going to motivate the worms to 
get into sort of a mode of reproduction if they sense that they're not cramped. They're going to uh, feel comfortable, you know, mating and laying down some cocoons and expanding their numbers, which is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. A big, a big population in a worm bin means that it's got a good appetite, and then I could put more and more kitchen scraps and compostable materials in there for the worms to break down for me. So that's a, a pretty generous quantity there of uh, fresh bedding that we just added. And I've also got this stuff that I took out of the harvest of a recent system. There's things in here like uh, all kinds of leftovers of different materials that just never really broke down and it seems like one of my newer bins like this one is a good place to put it. So we'll drop that in here as well. Then we can start coming back with the the cardboard bits and the, uh, the slow composting pumpkin stem, slow composting cork. It's an interesting little piece of corn cob. This really moldy pile of might even be some leftover bread in this pile, which the worms definitely seem to be enjoying as well. Stuff we're definitely not going to see leftovers of. This probably is a piece of leftover bread. Or maybe, I don't know, it's hard to say. And so we built out the feeding area considerably. I'm just hoping we've got enough stuff that we excavated earlier with which we can cover up with at the end. <laughs> I think we'll put these leftovers front and center just so we can come back to them at some point and see how they're coming along this little pile of worms in here. Don't want to flee because of the bright lights. They'd rather just stay put in their yummy food items. So I'll protect them from the bright lights so they don't feel compelled to run away. And then we could um, we could start coming in with today's feeding. And it's, um, it's a variety of stuff. I figured I would just empty the bag and then we could pick through it when it's already been applied. Some of this stuff's pretty obvious, right? There's a peel of a banana, a pretty good size banana. Look at that, it goes all the way across the entire container. And then these leaves, I don't know what these leaves are. My mom stopped over with a variety of different stuff. To contribute to the worm feeding endeavor so um, I know she's got guests invited over some of her friends and I'm gonna be heading over there in a short while as well I figured I'd give it a sniff to see if I can identify what it is I thought maybe it was parsley or maybe it was spinach or something I'm not quite sure what it is I'm not so good at uh, identifying stuff <laughs> sometimes and then here this is what's left of a mango including its seed so I think kind of like the um, avocados that mango seeds probably gonna take some time to get broken down and I guess the nice thing about this is that oh, there's even two seeds okay did seem like quite a bit to me, so I'm not surprised there's two seeds here. These things, they'll probably have all the yummy fruit stripped off of them, but I, I doubt that the worms are going to be able to inf infiltrate the um, that outer husk of these mango seeds. So perhaps next time when we're in here checking in on the system, perhaps we can get the old, the old um, pocket knife out and put a nice little cut into these seeds but right now since they're frozen they're, they're tough anyway but the fact that they're frozen would just compound that so I figure we'll just let let the uh, the bin work it down to a point where maybe it softens it up enough that I could actually uh, you know open them up so that the worms can have access to the insides and then I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll put a few more little things in here like this stuff here is my crushed eggshell collection Especially in a newer bin like this, I, I like the idea of being pretty generous with the grit. And the crushed eggshell is the source of grit that I apply to my worm bins. And then here I've got some worm chow. Not a whole lot, so I figured I would just give them whatever remains of that. But I thought it might be a good idea to... There's some leftover food here, so let's make sure this has all been returned to the feeding area. And um, so yeah, I thought maybe I could make them go kind of crazy for this piece of paper here, this paper towel by coating it with this um, this worm chow. 
And I made up a big batch of worm chow. I've got a, another jar similar to this. In fact, a little bit bigger even. Full. So I figured I can go pretty generous and not worry about depleting my supply because I've got even more than a full container of this on standby ready to go. And that's going to be their feeding. Pretty nice feeding. Let's get it covered up and that'll be the end of that. I'm going to go pretty big on excavating the outer edges too because I want to cover the feeding area up thoroughly. And then we can kind of loosely return some aerated material back into the outer edges. Just want to make sure we're not leaving too much yummy stuff out on the surface that might attract flying insects. Although, you know, I guess with the BTI, you know, with the mosquito dunks solution sprayed into here, the, the flying insects can try to make themselves at home in here, but I doubt they'll be successful. But I'd almost rather just go with that whole concept of an ounce of prevention is always better than a pound of remedy or whatever the saying is. All right, we've almost got enough to cover up the feeding area. Oh my goodness, lots of worms hanging out. <laughs> and I think if we kind of just break up some of this stuff and loosen it up, it'll help us create a nice level top surface. You know, all this stuff that we aerate will settle, all the foods that they got will settle or get eaten and get depleted. And then we'll probably still come back to a somewhat level system next time, or who knows, sometimes you come back and the feeding area is just a big ditch <laughs> showing that they've, you know, pretty much gobbled up almost everything you've given them. So there's some stuff in here like a banana peel where parts of it will go quick, parts of it will take a long time like the stem, the mango too, all the, the peels will probably get eaten for the most part, but the seeds will probably show hardly any signs of wear next time. So it's kind of a nice combination of a feeding that includes some slower foods as well as some more quick foods. All right, fun stuff. This paper's holding out pretty good as far as being our top covering, but if it continues to show signs of wear like this going forward then we might have to replace it at some point soon but for now I think we're still in pretty good shape just sticking with it it's just that when the um this doubled up so I fold it the other way so that unfolding it um, might be a little bit more difficult so I just wondered if maybe unfolding it and giving it a little bit more exposure to the surface then the worms could continue to nibble at this and maybe next time we could actually just recycle it as bedding to go down into the feeding area and we can just provide the bin with a nice replacement top covering. Alright, don't have to be precise or neat, just get, get the job done, right? <laughs> Alright, very nice, very nice. Yeah, I, I like the idea of keeping the moisture level in these newer systems high. And it doesn't even feel like we bought the level up much. We Perhaps we could have even gone more generous with the bedding. Maybe next time we'll do just that. So yeah, last time we went pretty generous with leaves. This time we went pretty generous with the prepared bedding. But it does seem like there's ample room in here to go even bigger if we wanted to next time. But it's too late now. We're done. <laughs> That'll have to just wait until next time. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. I've got a few things i got to take care of putting away and cleaning up, but I'm not going to keep you around for that because that's boring. Before I go, though, really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel, too. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now. <laughs>